Hi everybody, today we are going to talk about direct and inverse variation. Now one thing I'd like to point out since it is our first flipped lesson, this symbol that you might see up in this corner or in a different corner means that you should be taking notes on this slide. So um, two variables are considered to show direct variation if they look like this, y equals ax. So notice that a is defined as a non-zero constant, so it could be like y equals 2x, y equals 1 half x. The idea is that the a value is the same for the entire function, and we call that a value the constant of variation. So if it's in the form of y equals ax, it's direct variation, and if it's in the form of y equals a divided by x, it's called inverse variation. Now you can look at an equation and decide whether it's in direct inverse variation or whether it's neither. So look at example one. First of all, you'll see that this is xy equals five. We do need to put it in the form of y equals. So for number one, I'm gonna divide both sides by x and I get y equals five over x. Now you can see that this is in the form of y equals a over x where our constant of variation is 5, so this is clearly inverse variation. Okay, now look at number 2. This one, it already says y equals. This is y equals x minus 4. Now, if you, essentially, if you see a plus or minus sign, this is going to be neither inverse nor direct variation. That's because it's not in the form of y equals a times x and it's not in the form of y equals a divided by x. Now let's look at number three. This one says x equals. So if you looked at this very quickly you might think that it's an inverse form but we want it to always say y equals so I'm going to multiply both sides by two and it says y equals 2x. Now you can see that this is in the form of y equals a times x so our constant of variation would be two. So this is actually direct variation. So make sure your equation says y equals. Our key here is to solve for y. And then you should be pretty, um, it should be pretty obvious which one it is. Now let's try thinking about this in a different form. Let's rewrite the general equations to solve for a. So for my direct one, if I solve for a, I divide both sides by x, it's a equals y over x. Um, and if I solve for a for inverse, I multiply both sides for x, so it's a equals xy. Now, this is telling us that if we take any y value and divide it by any x value over here, it should always equal that same a value. Or inversely, for the inverse variation, if we take our x and we multiply it by y, it should equal the same number every single time. So this is a different way that you can check to see if a function um, varies directly or inversely. And so once again, you're looking for that ratio between the two numbers. So let's give this a try. This says, tell whether an x and y show direct, inverse variation, or neither. So remember, we're checking two things. We're going to check to see if there's a constant for x times y, which would show inverse variation. And we're going to see if there's a constant value for y divided by x, which would show direct variation. So once again, I'm using the rewrites when we solved for that constant of variation. So for A, let's check to see if there's an inverse um, variation. So we're just going to multiply all of our x and y values together. So if I do x times y here, it's negative 80. Now if I do x times y here, it's negative 45. So since these two numbers are different, I can already tell that this is not an inverse variation. It is not an inverse variation. Now let's check for a direct variation. So for this, I check y divided by x. So if I check this first one, 20 divided by negative 4 is negative 5. Okay, let's check this next one. 15 divided by 3 is negative 5. Okay, let's check this one. 10 divided by negative 2 is negative 5. 
And let's check this last one. And we get, once again, negative 5. So for this one, there is, in fact, a direct variation because that ratio of y over x is constant for every single coordinate. Now at this point, I would like you to stop the video and I would like you to try um, example B on your own. So you're, text, you're testing whether there's an inverse relationship or a direct variation by testing x times y and y divided by x. Okay, let's see how you did. So if you're checking um, x times y for an inverse relationship, well, 1 times 60 is 60. 2 times 30 is 60. 3 times 20 is 60. 4 times 15 is 60. So this clearly shows an inverse variation because that ratio, or the x times y is always that same constant. So here our a value is actually 60. Well, let's check direct. So 60 divided by 1 is 60. We're checking that first point. Now 30 divided by 2, the second point, gives us an a value of 15. These values are not the same, so it shows that it is not direct variation. So we can tell that for b, our answer should be inverse. Now at this point in time, I would like you guys to come up with a question that you have um, about inverse or direct variation, whether it's about the general equations we talked about or the when we rewrote it and solved for A. So at this point, I would like you to pause and come up with a question that you have or a question that you think another student might have. Okay, now we're actually going to try using what we know to write our own equation. So this says that x and y vary inversely. Use the values to write an equation relating x and y. So first of all, when I see the word inversely, I know that my form is y equals a over x. So if you think about this, they tell us y, they tell us x, what we need to know is a. So. Let's substitute some values. Instead of y, I'm going to put a 4. So I'm going to say 4 equals a divided by my x value, which is 3. With just this simple equation, I could very quickly solve for a. So if I multiply um, both sides by 3, I get a equals 12. Now this is what I plug into my original equation. So my new equation is y equals 12 over x. And this is my answer. This is an equation that relates x and y um, inversely. Okay, so essentially you're solving for a using the values they give you, and you plug it back into your equation. Okay, at this point, I would like you to stop the video, and please try number two on your own. Okay, let's see how you did. So once again, we are missing our a value, which is what we want to solve for. So we're going to substitute the values they gave us. So let's say 8 equals a over 4, which means a equals 32. So that's the only thing I need to substitute for my final equation. And that is all for today. Thank you guys for watching um, this first video. And make sure you come to class tomorrow with your prepared question and ready to take that Socrative quiz at the beginning of class.